and Raphael is someone who he's recently into the community, but he is more of a net play uh, person. So okay. it's going to be interesting to see how much this transfers over to uh, speedrunning. Looks like we've gotten started already. And uh, I noticed that they started at different times. I wonder if... Yeah, we're going to sync those yeah. in just a second. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if that was a syncing thing. Yeah, Card is already off to his uh, typical rapid-fire combo spam start. Exactly what you want. Game. It's the 17 seconds on Lakitu. Meanwhile, now we're going to see uh, Stump try to get some action started of his own. And you gotta, you gotta send over a good amount of garbage at the start, but you also gotta hope that the AI doesn't lower too much, and we see him get the clear on Block of Two in 34 seconds. Yeah, so he did clean it up uh, pretty nicely there at the end, but as you can see right now, cards is. <laughs> He basically has this beginning game set. Even without the RNG manipulation for uh, race setting, he is still going through these beginning matches super quick. Yeah, this does not surprise me at all. I mean, typically it it, it takes some, some bad luck for cars to not get a really good early time. Either um, if, the, if the AI just lowers the stack way, way too low, or if he just somehow drops... Uh, a chain, uh, drops a chain. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give uh, uh, Stump a little more focus here, because I feel like he is uh, not as, as big of a name. So we kind of all know what to <laughs> expect from Cards as he finishes up with stage three. Mm -hmm. yeah, Stump definitely does have the experience. I mean, he's definitely quite the underdog in this matchup, but like you said, Tetris Attack, anything can happen, and yeah. if Stump gets that god run, it is possible, because Stump, he joined the Pokemon Puzzle League tournament that happened last year. He's joined several of the GDQ Versus tournaments, so, you oh, know, nice. he, he can have that tournament composure, I'm pretty sure, you know. It's just uh, maybe the technical skill is just not on par with cards. Yeah, luckily early on, you don't um, you don't need to send as much as you would think. Sometimes, more often than not, they they aren't gonna lower their stack very much just because the AI does not do much in the early going. And uh, Stump and Cards finish at about the same time. Definitely getting some, uh, Stump getting some help from Cards AI. His Cards takes forty seven seconds. Yeah, so he got off to that early lead, and he's going to maintain just about a stage lead, which is good for Stump for the time being, because uh, that lead was just lost super early, and he's kind of been keeping on par a little bit right now. Yeah. And for these yeah, first eight good. stages, uh, leads won't really mean too much, because the cave control just about any player in this game. Mm -hmm. The cave is... Yeah, the AI, my, my PB in the cave is like... <laughs> It, it's it's pretty good, so I don't really like going against those splits. But that's uh that's just something got to deal with. And it looks like Stump is getting into a bit of a groove. I've noticed that with a Tetris attack, you just have to you have to think so quickly. And in my experience, you can just get overwhelmed with like how quick you want to go if you are going for like those super good times. Like, I'll try to start off really quickly and then, like, not have, like, any follow-up because I just didn't see anything. That's a tricky game, man. You gotta balance chains and combos pretty much perfectly, and you gotta realize how aggressive your opponent's playing, because sometimes they can just miss clears and their stack's pretty high, or sometimes they just clear everything. So if you gamble a little bit and try yeah. to just do more quick combos and don't build up a big enough chain, they will drop the stack down and they'll probably yeah. troll you for at least 10 more seconds, if not longer. Yeah, and 10 seconds is a long time in this game. 
but he's, but he's going at a, at a pretty steady clip. Like, I haven't seen him get, like, too hung up on a single guy so far. Yeah, he's playing pretty well for the most part, but unfortunately, just, uh, Cards is playing a little bit better as well. But it's still about, like, a stage and a half, I want to say, and Cards is getting trolled a little bit here, so this is Stump's chance to make a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, I don't think he can keep this chain going. I guess a five, but I didn't think he. I don't think he got combo with it, and uh, Arg is a little low. Let's see if, if he gets a proper follow up here. This might be enough, though. A chain Ooh. is going to be dropping on Blark's side. But is he gonna? But he has the double stacks. Ah, oh, but that stop time. Ooh, look at that! Look at that frame perfect. Uh, or the kill right as the block was dropping. Yeah, that's exactly what Stump needed because he did have a clear right afterwards, so it could have went a little bit longer. And just with that clutch follow-up, Stump does make up a little bit of time because Lunchfish did troll cards for about like 15 seconds longer, I want to say. Uh, but the card gets a kill on uh, Raven here and goes mm -hmm. into the cave at sub-6, which is a pretty good be benchmark, I like to say. I haven't run this game very much, but I was always trying to get into cave under 6. Yeah, sub-6 cave is definitely a really good pace to secure a sub-9 time, which is going to win a majority of the races in this tournament. Yeah, what I've liked about this tournament so far is just learning more about uh, Tetris Attack as a speedrun, because I just had no, all, I had no idea what was like considered a, a typical good run. I, I, the only news I heard about Tetris Attack, because I didn't follow it much, was uh, when like Yoshi was getting PBs, and those were like super good. And I kind of had the impression that this game was kind of consistent, but now uh, that, I know that's definitely not the case. Mm -hmm. We'll say it's more consistent than Puzzle League, because Puzzle League's AI can just do what it wants sometimes. <laughs> luckily with I, this I one, if you have the opponent topped off, at max they'll troll you like four more clears i mean sometimes it goes longer but you know for a top player you hardly see matches go above one minute except for bowser yeah and that is nice like i like being able to just play well and then win Ooh, well, look at uh a uh, piranha plant messed up that clear right there and that gives cards the win and it looks like card is in a pretty good spot right now going four stages ahead Stump is having some trouble with a uh, lunge fish at the moment, so unless uh, something really godly happens. Yeah, Cards, cards is rolling a... through the cave right now. Those first two <laughs> stages were quick, but Stump is finally going to get past uh, lunge fish here, who trolled him for quite a bit. He's only down by three stages still, and I mean, Bowser is still on the table. Anything can happen, but Stump's got a lot of ground to make up. Ooh, that was some quick cursor movement from, uh... I keep forgetting these guys' name off the top of my head. Oh. Uh, Koopa. Kamek? Kamek, Kamek, yeah. There we go. I, I do I'm not... usually the same way with things, but for some reason I can... I can at least remember them if they're on the screen for me. Yeah. I, I just look at them and I'm like, Man, I've played Mario so many times, I should know this, like, right away. Yeah, uh, not too much of a troll there. It was his longest cave stage by far, but Bowser is up next for cards. Eight minutes and 30 seconds in. Stump needs a miracle at this point, but luckily it's a best two out yeah. of three. You know, even if, if things do turn out as we expect, which is uh, cards being the heavy favorite, I just like getting some puzzle action in. Oh, for sure. And for Stump, you know, it's a pretty good run for him as it is right now. I don't remember if you mentioned his PB, but I think it's in the 11-minute area, so he could still be on pace for a PB. And sometimes that's, like, your main goal for races like this, you know? Just get that yeah. practice in. Because, you know, it, it's pretty hard to beat cards. But, hey, oh, I know. if you get a good run in and you feel accomplished, then that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. Uh, but Bowser's going to have some uh, easy chains going on here. And trying to downstay. I think this should be good. This should be good. Uh, he's finding clears. And there we it. There it is. Cards finishes with a 933. 
Yeah, he just kept trying to find more and more clears, but his stop time was running super thin at the end. So, Cards with a very good sub-10 time for this first race, and he's going to be taking a 1-0 lead over Stump right now. Yeah, right now, let's just see if uh, Stump finishes off or how he finishes off. There is an incentive to finish off, isn't there, in this tournament? Yes, we can talk about that as Stump is finishing right now. So, there are five people in each one of the groups uh for this group stage five groups five people and uh mm -hmm. we're gonna have two separate brackets after this qualifying stage so the top two from each group are moving on to a main bracket very similar to what we did for the puzzle league tournament and everyone else will qualify for the uh secondary bracket or as we're calling it the redemption bracket and we're giving people a chance because sometimes you get like a really hard pull or some people step it up and uh for we're offering two wild card spots the first one is going to be obtained by the highest uh very hard race time average throughout group stage and what that means is of the non-qualifiers we record everyone's times in their matches and whoever's is the best out of everyone else they'll get that extra spot to try to compete for uh the main bracket and okay. then that last spot is going to be uh, earned through a last uh, second tiebreaker race. And when that happens, right at the end of group stage, we'll decide a time for uh, anyone who wants to join and try that out. And it's going to be three races. And depending on how you finish in each race, you'll get a certain amount of points. And whoever has the most points by the end of the three races will get that second and final spot to get into main bracket. Yeah, I do like that. Because uh, you could you could uh, have a, a, a good player or like just suddenly, or, or just anyone really, just get some godly runs and maybe a talented player just gets unlucky and this gives them a, an extra chance or you got some extra merit involved what I'm trying to say. Yeah, for sure. I like doing it in a two-way step like that because, you know, it does reward someone for playing very hard in the group stage. And it also rewards if you, you know, you maybe didn't start off too hard or too hot, rather, and got a lot better as the tournament progressed, then that uh, three races at the end of group stage might be your ticket to try to get into main bracket. Yeah. Stump so looks the like redemption he's bracket. Keep going. Oh god. I was just gonna say this. So the redemption bracket's just like sort of a separate tournament of sorts. Yep. Uh, uh. Yeah, they're two separate brackets. When you're in one of the bracket, you will not meet any players from the other bracket, and they're okay. almost the same setup, except that main bracket's going to be double elim, and. Uh, Redemption bracket's only going to be single elim, but in both brackets, it's all going to be best three out of five instead of two out of three. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that's just a, a good idea because there's just so much randomness involved in this game. Yeah, for how quick these races are, and yeah, like you said, the randomness, Ooh. three out of fives are, are just really good. Even like four out of sevens are five out of nines but then it kind of gets a little bit too excessive there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could you could crank that way up but i think uh three out of five is a good a good compromise even if you go the full five you're probably not gonna have a match that lasts more than an hour and a half hour to hour and a half about yeah, so Stump's trying to pick up a little bit here to make a pretty good finish at the end. Uh, his Lungefish, Raphael, and Hookbill were all, like, pretty big trolls around, like, two minutes for each. With Naval, though, he had a really good finisher at the end. He sent a lot of pressure over. Now he's looking to do the same to Kamek, and he's Ooh, going to end with a 21 second. That was super good. Kamek helped him out a lot by uh, keeping uh, his stack high with those peaks. Or those pillars on the side. Mm -hmm. And he, he sent the appropriate uh, combo garbage blocks to not produce a lot of shake time. And that ended up giving him a gold on his split. So if that's accurate, that's a new best for him. That's excellent. This is a good start on Bowser so far. This 
what I like Ooh, to see those. from Stomp right now. He, his end game is picked up, and it looks like he's probably warmed up. And we can see a big change going into the second uh, game here. Man, unfortunately, Bowser, like, took care of those columns pretty quickly, and uh, he did not have the follow-up he needed at the time. All right, this could be good if there's not enough shake here. Oh, he gets the uh, reds. But as long as there's another chain not falling, I think he gets the kill. Yep. Sweet. There, that's an excellent Bowser right there. Yeah, GG's the stump. Those last three rounds were very, very quick. If he just didn't get trolled on those uh, three in the middle, he probably would have PB'd, actually. Yeah, and stump is confirming that that was a gold on Kamek. Which is, uh, golds are rare in this game if you played it enough. Because you just literally can't get any better on some stages. So, good job uh, on Stump for clearing that up, and we're just going to go ahead and get ready for the second round here. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't even want to look at card splits by the amount of attempts he done, he's done. He probably hardly ever gets a gold anymore because most of his golds are probably at minimum <laughs> nine seconds or lower even. Oh my gosh. That's the one interesting thing about puzzle speed runs is that your sum of best isn't going to mean anything. You're uh, in your golds. Once you get to a certain point, you're never going to be able to improve your golds. Like, there's an Odyssey runner that I watch a lot, and he gets gold probably, like, every week or so as he just keeps practicing. And But uh, once you get past a certain point in this game, you're just not going to gold anymore. I don't know if you heard that thunder in the background there. <laughs> oh, geez, I, I did not hear it. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the weather gods will relent a little bit so we can get this puzzle action in. Yeah, for sure. I, I didn't... I told Tay before this, but yeah, I got a thunderstorm rolling in, and hopefully it's not too bad, because I got a match yeah. later that we got to do, too, but the puzzle gods shall bless us. I have faith, and we will see a lot of great Tetris attack action, starting with this race, too, here. I think what we're all the most concerned about is whether or not the Reds are going to be able to get their game in over there in Ohio. Yeah, Luckily, uh, <laughs> most of the fans probably have given up on them since day one anyway, so... <laughs> oh my gosh. We, we could go on for a long time there, but I won't because that would be in bad taste, so... <laughs> Card's getting the, the 20 seconds on Lakitu, that's a little bit slow for him, but Lakitu did troll him a little bit by uh, only having about three lines of blocks. Yeah, maybe slow for card standards, but I bet anyone would take a 20 second for Lakitu, especially since he doesn't raise his stat. Oh, oh yeah. Like, I, when I was starting raising, uh, running this, 20 seconds was just fine by me. And I think, uh, yep, there's a 13 second on Bumpty. And meanwhile, on stump side, it looks like he's just having a hard time uh, getting things going. But luckily, on these earlier stages, uh, the AI is just not going to clear anything, and they'll stack will raise naturally, at the very least. Come on, Stump. Don't... Okay, so Stump does get the save there. And yeah, like I said, a lack of two st stack just raises naturally, and that finishes him off. Yeah, luckily for him, even if uh, Lagatu still would have had a little bit of leeway to work with, all the garbage that he did clear was going to be blocks, and he would have ha probably had a pretty good follow-up, but he's going to mm -hmm. need a little bit more from that. Cards is just going through these yeah. first opponents pretty crazy. Being at 150 on Wiggler is actually a pretty ridiculous pace. That's un unbelievable. He's had a... Uh, everything's been uh, sub... Well, the first one... Yeah, everything's been sub-20, I believe. But look at, look at that. 17 seconds for Stump on uh, Bumpty. But, Cards, uh, unfortunately... Cards wasn't impressed with that 17. Yeah. It's gonna Cards raise like, him with that what 13. The, <laughs> what the frick is that, Card says. But yeah, that is a good bounce back for Stump, though, because that it was much needed after a little bit of that lack of two troll. And if he can get something going on Poochie here, he might be able to get a really quick kill again. Look at that. 
Twitchy definitely helped him there by uh, keeping that column there. Man, dude, cards is not letting up right now. Another very quick time, 16 seconds. He's going into uh, stage six, sub three minutes. That's uh, it's not too bad. Stump's trying to get something started on uh, Wiggler here, and that can be the the one downside of this game is that. You don't want to, if you're going for pretty good times, you don't want to raise your stack too much because typically you'll have enough from your, from like a lower stack. But then if you don't get something going from your lower stack, then you're just not going to have much left over for a follow up. And these are some crazy times so far in card screen. If you do the math and say he got the same times as his first half, this would be a sub-7 run. But the later half opponents can typically troll quite a lot. But I don't know. I definitely hope to see a lot of PVs going. And I don't think we've seen a PV yet in tournament. I could be mistaken on that. And if cards would be the first one to do it, that would actually be incredible considering how good his PB is, but I probably just cursed him <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, with um, how good cards his PB is, like he's averaging something ridiculous, like 15 seconds a stage, so it's pretty likely that that 28 seconds uh, sink to PB. At least for him. Stump's getting a good chain right here. He's sending a 6 chain follow-up and Hopefully that'll wrap things up on Froggy here. Yeah, Froggy was chaining and doing eight combos, dude. I didn't know he was allowed to do that. Oh, but then unfortunately, Froggy, he gets a ton of clears and uh, lowers the stat all the way down. But Stump with another good follow-up. <laughs> oh my god, do you, see the, do you see how these chains are lining up? <laughs> I, I was looking at card screen where he completely buried Rafael. He force killed him, and it was still a 20-second kill. That's actually pretty crazy, and now he is yeah. fighting Hookbill at sub-5. Oh, my God. Stump will right, so close we, this yeah. off, though, and he's, he's making up a little bit of ground. But, man, Cards is just finding these combos. He cuts it off early. This could be good. He might get a quick kill on Hookbill here if Hookbill stops uh, doing Stop clears. It. Can we just knock it off, Hookbill? Bill's being a big butt at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, Hookbill. You never want to see the AI just have totally a totally level stack, because it means that they'll probably have a clear. But Hookbill does some bad down stacking and still gets a good time of 34 seconds. Mm -hmm. Stump, meanwhile, got a 17-second kill on Blark. There he is. He's been kind of up and down, but his, like, uh, high points have been super quick times. And as you saw earlier, he got a gold, I believe it was on stage two or three. Yeah, he's saying he got a, a four-second gold. Man, Cards is just finding these combo, combo implementations so well right now, but... His opponents have been chaining quite well and have just that one tower to deal with. So his follow-ups are good, but most of the time they just find this clear at the end. Oh, Ooh, and you see frame that? perfect, dude. <laughs> frame perfect kill right there. <laughs> oh, I love it. So Car's playing on fire right now, getting enough luck too. Uh, he won't get the uh, PB, unfortunately, but he's uh, on pace to get the first sub-8 maybe of the tournament, which would be absurd considering this is week two group stage man calm down cards dude i think we have a rule that says any sub eight results in an automatic tournament win and just everything else is canceled <laughs> so uh, let's hope the card just doesn't ruin the tournament for everyone else card has a good follow-up on you might get a crush kill here depending on uh yep He's gonna have to wait just he... a little bit, but yeah, he is okay. going to get it. And sub sub eight seems kind of rather unlikely right now, unless you can get like a twenty second Bowser. But it'll still be an amazing time, and I I'm hoping that I when I face Carvet, he does not have this good of luck. 
I mean, obviously there's skill there too, but uh, still lots of luck involved. Yeah, when he plays you, he'll actually get the sub seven, and then we'll have to cancel the Tetris Attack tournament from 2016. God, I, that would be that'd be so bully. <laughs> All right, let's see what we Ooh. got on Bowser's screen here. The separated stacks. This might... Oh, no. Oh, that last second clear is going to ruin the sub-8, but he might just get a time right above 8 minutes if Bowser dies here, and he God. will. God. That's so dumb. <laughs> it's, so, it's so ridiculous. 803, man. Uh, his longest round was probably a high 20-second stage, so cards playing super consistent, giving us the best race time of the tournament so far with an 803, man. That's topples my BB. Yeah, let's, let's just get no bullying from cards in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, but that, that was excellent. He's just, he is so good at just having the whole screen explode with chains and combos. All, all at once, and that is probably the number one skill you need to get uh, an elite time. Yeah, GG's the cards. He's going to move on and become 2-0 and in his group. Stump, unfortunately, is going to fall to 0-2, but man, that. he is... Look at that 15 seconds. Yeah, he is doing really good on this run. Man, I'll, I'll take that any day. The cave. And he's still pretty well on PB pace. For reference, his PB is 11.06 here, so he's got plenty of time to try to do it. These last three opponents do have to cooperate, though. And I believe, did you, uh... You were on bye last week, Tay? Or did you play last week? I don't remember. I had bye. Uh, right now, um... I think I'm, I'm scheduling with Raphael right now. I think... When, when's the deadline again? Because we we have we tentatively have something set up for Sunday. Yeah, yeah, Sunday's fine. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, think I'll uh, be... Stump has had some pretty beefy opponents to begin the uh, group <laughs> stage too. He he played Shadow first round and then Cards here. Is, isn't his like? Yeah, he's in a bracket with Shadow Me and Cards, and that's uh, that's kind of tough. <laughs> yeah, the the competition came out to play during this tournament, man. I don't see any easy path for anyone making main bracket and definitely not winning the whole speedrun tournament, man. It's like anybody's game at this point. Well, we I'm had, just like uh, a little. We had Cozy Pocket pull out a sub eight like the day before the tournament started. Cozy Pocket? Yeah, he's Ooh, in uh, hey, Group A familiar. with Yoshi. I just, I, I see him on the leaderboard right now. I did not know that, I'm not familiar with Cozy Pocket, but that's a really good time. I believe for the most part he would play uh, Marathon Mode, which he has a really good time in that category too, but he just has really solid fundamentals, and you'll likely never see him uh, drop a chain all too much, like on par to a lot of the uh, top level competitors in this uh, tournament. Yeah, and that that might be the source, the highest source of variance, is just like your ability to just um, just to be good, just to execute your chains and combos. Stump can find a pretty good follow up here. It might drop just in enough time to kill Kamek. He yeah. definitely has Kamek topped off, and that will do it go. at 36. This is looking to be a big improvement from Stump's uh, first round, which is good. Yeah, he's had a pretty good run. Like, he's going to be missing PB, but this could be a tournament PB for him. He's had, like, three golds overall, man. We've seen a lot of good stuff from Stump. His chains have been really consistent. And he's been getting six combos like that. I think, like, another thing that's important is, um, you know, sometimes you'll get, like, those accidental sixes where you get a clear on top and you were expecting to do something with that block on top and now it's been cleared. So you need to, like, have the ability to right on the fly see what else you can do. Otherwise, you'll be dropping your chain. 
Oh, that was pretty unfortunate on Stump's screen. Bowser's gonna be getting the second tier. He had like the perfect kill setup on Bowser, but a chain fell right into place. But this could do it right here. Bowser oh goes greedy and goes for the six. Let's, come on, let's, let's get it. There we go. Very good. And that will do it. Stump with the 1243 on screen there. Two pretty good runs, but Card's playing out of his mind today. I don't Cards think Stump. Stump will definitely take those races, man. Yeah, congratulations to Cards on his 82nd consecutive uh, TA victory. 88 <laughs> consecutive. Cards has something job. to prove, though, because he did not win the last uh, Tetris Attack speedrun tournament, though. So I, he's definitely out for blood. And he's got <laughs> Guys, some I... new competitors that are going to try to stop him <laughs> in the way. Did uh, Yoshimitsu win the last one? No, it was uh, FFR Pro, actually. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. FFR, I got second, and Cards got third. Oh, I can't believe it. Then again, I, for some reason, I was like playing out of my mind for that tournament. <laughs> One thing that I'm banking on is when we were doing practice races the other night, I was all my times were super consistent, like between nine and eleven minutes. So, hoping that consistency will be good for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need for these uh, speedrun tournaments, man. Not these. Uh... Well, your strats that you could use for PB attempts can work, but definitely more consistency, you know, just making sure your opponent is topped off will give you that stuff in the long run. But, mm -hmm. yeah, GG's to both of them. That was some really good play by both, and we're going to take a look at the bracket here. Cards is going to...